Cleaning relaxes me. Should I start a cleaning business? Ooh, that's a good one, and we're going to talk about that today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's show is brought to us by House Call Pro, which is the number one software for service providers. This is house cleaners, it's professional organizers, it's painters, it's landscapers, it is people that come to your house and service your business. It's all of your CRM, which is the customer relationship management system built into an app on your phone. So any updates that you make, any upsells that you make, any changes to an existing job, it's all right there inside the app that travels with the work order on the phone. So when you go to invoice the customer, all the information is there. And then once you get the information back and the confirmation of the work that you've done, it's one click credit card processing. So it's all integrated and it's all on your phone and it saves you hours of administrative tasks. So check it out at housecallpro.com forward slash Angela and they have a special deal for me and my friends. All right, on to today's show, we have a house cleaner who called in and asked this question. Hi, my name is Mel Almonas. I'm thinking about starting my own cleaning business. So I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm really good at cleaning. And it's something that I enjoy doing. It relaxes me. Right now, I'm currently working as a mental health specialist. I have a bachelor's degree, but I work on the overnight shift. And the only thing to do on the overnight shift is clean. So I've been getting a lot of like compliments on how well I'm doing. So I want to start my own cleaning business. Since I don't have any references, I'm going to my neighbors who already have a cleaning person. And I just want them to give me a trial. So my question is, do I charge my neighbor who will be my first client to clean her house? Or do I do it for free? Please let me know. I'm really stuck on this. Thank you. All right, Mel, that is a really interesting question. Thank you so much for calling in. There are a couple things that concerned me about what you said, and I want to hit each of them individually so that I don't miss anything. But if I do miss anything, please leave comments in the notes below because we do answer our questions and we would love to answer yours as well. All right, listen, here's the deal. You say you love cleaning because it relaxes you and that you've been cleaning on the night shift at your other job. All right, so cleaning luxuriously to relax you and whatever is very, very different than being a professional house cleaner. When you are a professional house cleaner, while you are enjoying the job and while it may relax you, you don't have the luxury of relaxation on a job. The whole entire game of professional house cleaning is all about efficient cleaning. It's about getting in, getting the job done, being efficient and effective, and then getting out. You don't go in and leisurely roam around and clean things and wipe things and take your time and all that stuff. You just don't have time because what you're selling is your time in exchange for money. And so there's only so much time in exchange for your money. We all only have 24 hours in a day. And so if time is your most valuable asset, which it is to most people, you only have a certain number of hours in a day, you are able to clean houses. So as a business, the, the leisureness of cleaning to relax and feel great and all those things is gone. It is a business. It's boom, 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 boom. You have a certain set of criteria. You're working from a checklist. You're going in, you're going to do the job. Okay. So that is the business. Now, the next thing that you mentioned is you says you have a bachelor's in mental health. That is a concern for a couple of reasons. And that is your go-to. Okay. So that's what you know. That's your comfort zone. That's where you thrive. So right now you're great at solving those kinds of problems. Now I need you to back away from that if you're going to be a professional house cleaner. It's great that you have that experience and you have that um, going on in the back of your mind, but I need you to step back from that. Here's the reason why. You're going to get inside customers' houses and you're going to see a bunch of situations that are going to kick in to your comfort zone. And you're going to say, wait a second, I can help this person, right? But they're not paying you for mental health services. They're paying you for house cleaning. And so while it's great to be aware of those things. And while you will be more equipped than most house cleaners to be able to navigate those, that's not the job. The house cleaning is the job. And so when you get in and people have these issues and they want to talk and they want to work through them and there are things that you know the answers to, that's not what you're being paid for. And so you'll have to back away from that, which is going to be super hard. So every time you run into a scenario like that, I want you to have red flags go up going, whoa, I switched jobs. This is not the same job that I was paid for before. This is, this is house cleaning. 
stick with the house cleaning. You got to be laser focused on the house cleaning. All right. The next thing that you asked, and this is a series of interesting questions, but should you go work for your neighbor who already has an existing house cleaner? Okay. So you've already told us that you don't have experience with professional house cleaning, yet you're going to go to a neighbor who already has one. Okay. That's a little bit of a concern because she's going to be comparing you to her existing house cleaner. And if the house cleaner is good, her house won't need a lot of work. So you're not going in to do a deep clean for the first time. You'll be doing a maintenance clean on a house you're completely unfamiliar with. Now, the reason we do a deep clean when we go to a customer's house for the first time is because we are learning their house. We're introducing ourselves to their home. And so until you actually clean a house, you don't know where all the nooks and crannies are and where the hidden spots of gunk are and things that need extra attention and all that stuff. So yes, you'll have to do a walkthrough. You'll have to do a cleaning. But by the time you get in the thicket of the cleaning, whatever that is, it's going to be time for you to go. By the time you've learned the house, you're not coming back because she already has a house cleaner. So I don't even recommend that you go to that person's house because it's going to be a whole lot of time and a whole lot of energy and it's a dead end job. It's not a repeat job. My suggestion would be that you go to somebody new you've never cleaned for before, put on your presentation and you will get better at your presentation as you go. Okay. And if you're no good to begin with, then get in front of a mirror and practice rehearsing a presentation. Have your friend or your neighbor come over and run through the presentation with her. Go over it again and again and again until you're comfortable doing a walkthrough. Once you're comfortable doing a walkthrough, I suggest you go to a brand new customer's house. Try to sell your services because it's going to tell you really quick, are you a good salesperson? And if you're not, as you are learning the business, you might also need to be learning sales and marketing. So there are a couple of things that go together and there's a reason why I wrote a book called How to Start Your Own House Cleaning Business. It removes all of the ifs and what ifs and the stuff that we leave to chance. It removes all that up front. It gives you a very simple step by step program so that it's very easy to get involved in the business. And it's only for about three months. Once you get in the groove of the business and you get up and running, then we change all the rules on you because now you have better tools and you have a better set of skills. You know what to expect and you know about how fast you clean. Okay, so the rules will change as you grow in your business. It's like a little baby that then grows through the toddler phases and they have this weird phase where they're learning how to walk and their legs are wobbly and all those things. As you're starting a business, you're in that toddler phase. And then there comes a moment where as a toddler, you just take off and you start running and you run away from mom and dad and you're gone, right? They can't keep up with you. So this is kind of like starting a new business. So my recommendation would be do not go to an existing person that already has a house cleaning company just for free. Okay. Then the next thing that I want to recommend you ask, should you charge? Yes, you should charge. And the reason I say this is I don't recommend at all cleaning for friends and family. For this reason, our relationships with friends and family are very different than our relationships with customers. And so if you're with friends and family, there's a tendency for them to say, Oh, look, Jake just won this soccer game. Check this out. And then you stop what you're doing and you check out what Jake just did because he's your nephew or he's your friend or whatever. And you know him and there's a relationship there. And Oh, let me show you one other thing. And the next thing you know, you've gone off on these weird little rabbit holes and you are not doing the job you are paid to do. Another thing that happens frequently with friends and family is they say, Oh, I got to run, go grab something at the store or something. Can you watch the kids while I'm gone? A regular house person wouldn't do that to you because you're being paid to clean houses, not watch their kids. So there are these weird boundaries that have already been crossed with friends and family. So I don't recommend cleaning for friends and family with the exception of your parents. If your parents need house cleaning, I recommend that you clean for them for free for this reason. They raised you and you owe it to them. So if they live nearby and they need your help, please go help them for free. Do not charge your parents, charge everyone else because this is a business. And if you don't respect your business enough to charge the people that are in your life, they're not going to respect you either. And we need support from friends and family, but they need to recognize us as having a real business. So these are a few things that I want you to think about as you get started. I want you to give it some serious thought. Is this the right business for you? Because if you love to clean and it's just this relaxing Zen place for you, this might be the wrong business for you. And I hate to say that because I'm, I'm encouraging and I want cleaners to be in the business, but it might be the wrong business for you. You might be better suited to have house cleaning as a hobby. I don't know. Things to think about. Alrighty. I hope this helps. If it does, please pass it on to a friend. If we've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.